The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Fear. So many choices. Only well, we no function fear well without. Woohoo! Fear! Hello and welcome to a very special edition of Beer Busters, where we're going to bring you, of course, as always, the news and reviews of some wonderful brews. I am not Dan Baker, and I am joined by my co-host and brewologist, Staff Hefner, and of course, our normal MC, product producer and editor, Dan Baker, and our very, very special fourth Beer Buster today, Charlie Baker, who happens to be our grandfather and the genetic point of origin of our collective love of beer. Uh, and as I mentioned, this is a very special episode because this is, in fact, our 10th episode, and this is a very live, exclusive extravaganza. Today's episode is actually recorded in front of a live audience. Everybody say hello. Yay! Yay! And as part of that, you may notice that mine is not usually the voice that you hear at the top of the episode. We've decided to switch things up a little bit and see if we can't fill each other's shoes. So... In the interest of time, thanks. <laughs> let's get to some news. <laughs> Alrighty, and our first story today is the question: How Australian is Foster's? Our Australian news website has warned that uh, Brits are about to become unbearable following uh, Andy Murray's historic victory at Wimbledon, Chris uh, Froome's, I believe I'm saying that correctly, stunning performances in the Tour de France, and the possibility of winning uh, England winning the Ashes. Um, so it aims to take the swagger of the Brits down a couple notches, arguing, among other things, that British beer is tasteless. Hence the longtime popularity for Foster's beer, an Australian brand, it says. However, how Australians is Foster's? It is marketed as the quintessential Australian brand. Uh, and we all know it's Australian for beer. Uh, that line traces back to 1980s UK ads featuring none other than Paul Crocodile Dundee Hogan, who would, uh, who would uh, da, 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 swing pints of the amber nectar. This is why Dan normally does this. <laughs> 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 but the reality is, if you walked into a bar in Australia and ordered a Foster's, you might well have uh, received some quizzical looks, because it's not very popular in that country. In fact, um, it is one of the least po uh, popular bills in Australia, apparently, and it is brewed under license in Britain, which is actually its biggest international market. So Australian uh, Foster's, not Australian. Other beers that aren't what they say they are uh, listed here, they have Cobra, which is marketed as Indian. Um, is like any India pale ale, is part British, part Indian. Uh, we also have Stella Artois, which is marketed as French and is actually Belgian, and uh, Carling, which is marketed as British and is actually Canadian. So you never know where your beer actually comes from. They like to tell you it comes from one place and it comes from another, whatever sells. Can I just throw something out about uh, about Foster's? Sure. Uh, the other night I saw the movie The World's End, the new uh, Edgar Wright, Simon Pegg movie. Right, it, right, was, right. it was really, really, really good. Oh, and Nick Frost. I can't leave him out. Um, it was really good, but at one of the, the pubs that they go to, he starts pouring pints of Foster's. And it was after I had read that article to share with you guys, so mm -hmm. that was one of the first things that I saw. Oh, yeah. I, yeah, I thought it was pretty interesting. The movie that takes place entirely in England has this quote-unquote Australian beer. beer. Right, yeah. right. It's not really Australian. Yeah, that's how things usually work, especially with these uh, really giant beer companies. They just, you know, whatever sells. Uh, so, moving along, we have another story here, and this is all about states that drink the most and least beer. Uh, more than 99 million Americans regularly drink beer, and last uh, year, drinking-aged Americans consumed an average of one beer per day, making beer America's top choice of drink over wine and liquor. Only one beer per day? Oh, well, on average. <laughs> I mean, you know, some people don't drink any. We're getting a thumbs down from the wine stringer over there, and then the guy that doesn't like beer. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> This is not And then the you. awesome uncle that's applauding. That's <laughs> <laughs> of, course, of course. Not to say, see your other uncle now is offended. Well, he's awesome for other reasons. <laughs> oh, hi, he says. Oh, hi. <laughs> uh, so the Beer Institute uh, with, did a state-by-state -state beer consumption uh, survey. The annual survey calculates the amount of beer sold in each state and then divides it by the number of citizens old enough to drink legally in that state. Um, according to Joe McLean, president of the Beer Institute, from hops producers to can and bottle makers in communities across the country, beer is an economic engine that contributes more than $246 billion, with a B, dollars to the U.S. economy. Um, according to uh, the Brewers Association, craft brewers sold more than 13.2 million barrels of beer yet last year, up 15% from 2011. Now, this ranking includes uh, both regular uh, big-time breweries as well as craft beer. Now, I'm not going to go through the whole list. 
Uh, but I will tell you that the, the state that drinks the most beer, anybody have any ideas what that might be? North Dakota. No, because you looked at the paper. No, I've actually seen this oh, article seen before. you've seen this article before. <laughs> North Dakota does, in fact, drink more beer than any other state here in the United States of America. Fif- uh, 45.8 gallons of beer per capita per year there in North Dakota. I guess they have nothing else okay. to do. Other than That's Steph, true. anybody have a guess who, what state drinks the least beer? Well, I saw the article, so I don't want to. So, what do you think? Pop up. Um, 50 states in the union. We've already walked, knocked one out. You got a 1 in 49 chance. <laughs> I'll pick, uh, let's see, Delaware. Delaware, you oh. are incorrect. It is unsurprisingly Utah. Utah drinks the least amount of beer of any other state uh, at 20.2 gallons per capita. Well, that's because of year. all their weird laws, I think. They do, uh, I think they do have the, the strictest. Um, strictest Cause, yeah, because it's laws. the Mormon state. So, it, it, yeah, yeah, they tend to be. Um, however, as we learned in a previous episode of Beer Busters, Utah is where Polygamy Porter comes from. Ooh, I remember that name. Also appropriate. Yeah. Uh, one last story we have here, and this has to do with uh, local brewery Yingling, uh, who is going to be sponsoring a NASCAR uh, car and driver. Now, I'm not really a fan of NASCAR myself, but I know a lot of people out there who drink beer are. <laughs> Our uh, audience is not NASCAR Some other fans people probably. are not NASCAR fans <laughs> now. All right, I, I take no responsibility because Dan chose these news stories, by the way. <laughs> yeah, but you're the one that had to read them so uh, you had to read through them first i'm just reading them uh it's true uh richard chilas racing is partnering with uh, dg yingling and sung to be a primary sponsor of the number three yingling light lager chevrolet driver with ty dillon i don't know who he is uh during the 2014 nascar nationwide series season uh, as part of their 185th anniversary that's right yingling's been around for 185 years they're going to be the primary sponsor on the rcr chevrolet camaro for eight races races of the 2014 schedule it's yingling's first time partnering with the nascar team um the Yingling Brewery is extremely proud to be partnering with a lower-class organization like RCR for the 2014 nationwide season, said Lou Romano, not Ray Romano, <laughs> director of marketing and wholesaler development for Yingling. Uh, Dylan, the driver, said, I'm honored to be representing an iconic brand such as Yingling. So, NASCAR fans, uh, Yingling will be uh, be representing in uh, 2014. Now, I know uh, uh, most uh, other beers that are involved in, in NASCAR are things like Budweiser and Yeah, the, the, the and bigger, more nationally so recognized ones. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know Pop-Up's a fan over there. He's giving us the thumbs up. Uh, but it's nice to say uh, Yingling, I think, is a step in the right direction. So who knows? Yeah. So, so that that's going to yeah, wrap yeah, that's, up for the that's news. That's our news. Good job filling on the news, Wayne. <laughs> this is why um, I'm not normally the MC. <laughs> Um, so what I wanted to do now, we, we typically do this uh, after we do the news segment, we introduce our guest and just kind of make sure all of our listeners get to know you. So as Wayne has already established, we, and, and you introduced yourself too, we are joined by Mr. Charlie Baker, of course, our grandfather. It is a special occasion that we are all here today because it today, is. why don't you tell us, Pop Pop? My 80th birthday. That's 80th right. 80th birthday. Wait, you actually said the real number. Usually oh, you tell yeah. people you're 39. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Too late. Only, I'm only 80 today. <laughs> <laughs> and tomorrow you're 39 again. Yes, right. okay. 39 tomorrow. <laughs> so now, uh, the reason we, obviously, besides having you here with us, having fun, celebrating, the reason we wanted to have you on the show was because we're we're the fans of craft beer, smaller beer, whereas your favorite beer is... Budweiser. Budweiser. <laughs> yes. So now, having... Uh, been around us for a while. I know Steph had come to visit you a few months ago and took you to some breweries. Have you started getting used to or started liking any of the the craft beers? Some of them. Some of them? Okay. So what was your favorite one that you had? Well, I have so many. (laughs) I heard uh, heard you like Magic Hat. That was pretty good. Yeah, Yeah, Magic Hat number nine. Number nine. I'm also fond of the good beer, that pumpkin beer. Oh, the one we had earlier. That... Yeah, that was uh, the uh, Sequani Creek, Creek Pumpkin. right? Yeah. Yeah. Captain one, Pumpkin's uh, Maple Mistress I that Ale. Last night, I believe that was yep. good. That, that is really good. good. Yeah, we yeah. had some of that earlier. That's a really good one. Of course, and Budweiser. <laughs> 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 Did you know? I did a story about this a while ago. Budweiser now has cans that are shaped like the bow tie to uphold their logo. No, I didn't know that. There you go. Yeah. So if you're going to buy Budweiser, you could at least buy the cool can, right? Well, no matter what can it comes in, okay, I'll still I tried. buy it. <laughs> <laughs> now, you're all excited. You were showing us your Bud Light can that he had today. It has the Eagles logo on it, right? They're one of the sponsors yeah. of the Eagles. So even though you live in Florida, you're still going to represent the Philly teams, right? Oh, yeah. All right, very good, very good. Well, um, since you've been drinking beer for a number of years now, what I, I came up with an idea for a game. And normally for our listeners out there, the reason that we decided to switch things up today is because I had an idea for the game for today. And instead of me just prattling on about news and then doing the game, Wayne decided to take over news. Uh, Steph later is going to uphold her duty on Know Your Beer after this right, game, right. which we're still pretty stoked about. Uh, now, I don't temporarily have... Temporarily 
succeed happy fun time games to Dan. Right. <laughs> um, I'll admit the intro that I have is not anything close to what Wayne would have done. In fact, I don't really have one at all, only because... It's no use trying. I'm not going to be as good as Wayne with these things. <laughs> so basically, I'm going to set up the game for you, and then we can you know, go on. Now, normally, too, I will say there is normally music that plays in the background, but f- because of limitations with the technology I have in front of me, we can't necessarily do it. Right, that. right. So the game that we have, I don't even have a fancy name for it, but I'm just going to call it Beer Jingles. So, I would have called it Jingle Jangle. Jingle Jangle? All right. Jingle Jangle. Beer Jingle Jangle. Beer Jingle Jangle. Beer, okay. So now, the whole concept of the game is, I have found a couple of clips from older beer commercials thanks to the interwebs. So this way we can see if, pop up if you remember any of these beer names off of their jingles. I'm just going to give you guys a, a chance to guess as well. Now, it is multiple choice, so don't worry. Okay. It's not going to be like what we put, uh, put poor Colin through a few episodes ago. <laughs> yeah, um, that was rough. I will, of course, be keeping score, and I'm going to hope that I don't mess up because I'm terrible at math. <laughs> so at the end, we will declare a winner. I don't have a tiebreaker, so if we have a tie, we're just going to have to deal with it. Okay. All right, so... Here we go. Let's get started. So I'm going to play the first one, and then I will give you the list of beers that it could potentially be. So here we go. We've seen tough times round these parts before, but a Texan's best when his back's against the wall. Working long days in a saddle, punching, roping, branding cattle. Is on the rise again. <laughs> give me love, give me, give me Texas. Okay, so. So I assume the bleep is where the name of the beer was? Correct, okay. yes. All right. I figured you guys would understand that. So, multiple choice we have. We have is it one? Is it Lone Star? Is it two? Alamo? Or is it three? Dixie? So, we'll start over here with you, Pop Pop. I would say Lone Star. Lone Star? Wayne, what do you have? Ah, uh, geez. Um, you know, my first thought was Lone Star 2, but I think maybe that's a little bit too obvious. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think of how many f- syllables would have fit into that bleep. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, what, was, what was the third option? Uh, Dixie. It was Lone Dixie. Star, Alamo, or Dixie. I'm going to go with Dixie. Dixie? All right. And Steph, what do you have? You know what? I was going to say Lone Star, but you have a very good point about the beats of the song, so I think I, too, am going to say Dixie. Dixie. All right. So we have one vote for Lone Star and two for Dixie. No love for Alamo, but the answer is Lone Star. Is it really? So, yeah, you guys would be right. So now, what I did too is so we could uh, be a little beer educated here as well. I have a little history of Lone Star. Lone Star Brewery was founded in 1884 by Adolphus Bush, who was of Anheuser Busch, and it was the first. Adolphus, his name yes. was Adolphus. Yes, Adolphus. Nice. Um, it was the first. Beer. See, I figured you would have. Yep, I heard of that beer. <laughs> it was the first large mechanized brewery in the entire state of Texas, and by 1903, they were selling an average of 65,000 barrels of beer annually. Now, after Prohibition, or as I like to call it, the Dark Ages, <laughs> another plant was built under new owners who brewed Champion Beer, another brand that they had. And then in 1940, the name Lone Star was used to market a beer from the brewery. And they also produced Lone Star Light Lime Lager in 1970 and then uh, Brute Super Premium in 1969. They still exist today, but they are contract brewed nowadays. Okay. So we have one point for pop up. I should probably write down a table for scores. So the 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 jingle that we heard, um, when was that from? Uh, Do you know, you had to ask a question. I don't have the answer. I'm to sorry. I was you? just curious because you mentioned like 1901, and obviously it's, it's it was from a while ago. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but wasn't that far back? Yeah. Right. These were mostly, if I remember seeing right, these were mostly commercials from the 50s or 60s. So, right. Right. Okay. Um, and it had the video was on YouTube, so of course TV had to be a big. So uh, well, I'm going to factor in 50s, 60s. Yeah. I don't think I have. I'm not going to say the next sentence because that would have given some things away. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. So we have pop up is ahead one to nothing to nothing. All right. To nothing, to nothing. Sorry. So next up, we have this one right here. You get a smile if you time with a pound of time. While on a field that bleep. Get a smile if you time with a bleep. While on a field that bleep. <laughs> the bleeps kind of got a little weird as I was trying to stretch them out. Yeah. Uh, so we have, Wayne, we will start with you here. That was either one, was it Valentine, two, was it Ballantine, or three, was it Knickerbocker? Oh, my goodness. I think it was Willy Wonka. Willy it sounded Wonka. like Oompa Loompa <laughs> singing or something. Uh, was it Valentine, Ballantine, or Knickerbocker? Knickerbocker. Knickerbocker. Oh, Correct. my goodness. Um, I'm going to go with a Valentine with a B. Valentine. All yeah, right. I'm also going to go with Valentine. All right. And Pop Up, how about you? I'll go with Valentine. Valentine. We have another <laughs> vote for, val- for Valentine. <laughs> you got to oh. talk into the microphone. Yes. I can't hear you. Uh, I'll go with Ballantine. So we have another vote for Ballantine. That is correct. Ballantine was it. Now, Ballantine Brewery was founded in 1840 in Newark, New Jersey. 
by Peter Ballantyne, who is a Scottish immigrant. Uh, I'm looking around. I'm noticing that we have lost our entire audience. <laughs> Are we? Little, we're that boring, aren't we? I guess so. it's getting <laughs> a little warm out here too. It is. Plus, there's food inside. So yeah. um, now it was originally incorporated as the Patterson and Ballantyne Brewing Company, and then Ballantyne bought out his partner circa 1850 and purchased land near the Passaic River to brew his ale. His sons joined him in 1857, and the company was renamed P. Ballantyne and Sons. And this name was used until May 1952 when the brewery closed. Now, Ballantyne exists today, but it is owned by Pabst. Hmm. So, oh, interesting. you each had the correct answer there, which means, Pop-Up, you were still up by one entire point. Good. Mm-hmm. All right. <laughs> so now we will go on to number three. My beer is the dry beer. East side, west side, and up, down, and down. Extra dry beer is the beer of great renown. Friendly, fresh, always happily dry. The clean, clear taste you want in beer is it extra dry. Okay, so now, Steph, we will start with you. Now, your choice is extra dry. Your choice will be Iron City, Blatz, or Rheingold. Hmm. Iron City, Blatz, or Rheingold. All right, I'm going to go with Rheingold. Rheingold. Steph has a vote for Rheingold. Pop up. Oh, sorry. What's your? Sounds re- like a marching band. Okay. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. So pop I'll, up. What do you have out of you? I'll go with Iron City. Iron City. We have one for Rheingold, one for Iron City. Wayne, is it Iron City, Blatz, or Rheingold? Uh, based on syllables, Rheingold. Gold extra dry. dry. I'm yes. gonna say Rheingold That's based what on I was syllables. Thinking too. All right. So two votes for Rheingold, one vote for Iron City. No love for Blatz in the middle there. And. Blatz, extra dry. Nope, doesn't mm. sound yeah. right. Well, it could it's be Blatz, log, extra log. It's big, it's heavy, it's wood. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> now, you two would be correct. It is Ryan Gold. I'm sorry, Pop-Up. That means now we are all tied at two. Ooh, two exciting. points across the board. It Things was Ryan Gold. heating up. I realized in the middle of editing these that you would use syllables as your clue, so at some point you will not be able to use Ooh, that. Oh, no. Oh, that, no. But I'd already it's done so much work harder. on this. It's, yes. No, it's like a, it's get harder as we exactly. go along. Oh. Now, Ryan Gold is a New York beer that was introduced in 1883 by the German-American Liebman family. Now, between 1950 and 1960, they held a whopping 35% of the state's beer market in New York. And as a family-owned company, their output was upwards of 700,000 barrels of beer a year as of 1914. Then by 1976... 1914. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> By 1970, every year, <laughs> basically. 76 trombones <laughs> start the, the big, big parade. parade. Um, the company could no longer compete with the bigger companies such as Budweiser, Miller, and Coors. Mm-hmm. And then its doors were closed. Recently, though, they have reopened with the same brewmaster as before and is still being sold in the tri state area. Local when did they, what year did they close? They closed in 1976. 1976, huh. okay. Yes. All right, so we are tied at two. Now let's keep going along. We have this song right here. Not a girl, it's a beer. It's a beer. Finest <laughs> thing in Texas, so I hear. So I hear. It was good for dear old Pappy, and it sure did make him happy. All right, so now we are back. I want that on my iPod. All right, I'll give you that song. Uh, hold on. Yeah. The, 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 the hook of the song is, it's a beer? Yes. That is, and that is it, genius marketing. You know what? I didn't write down the performer, but that was the whole marketing campaign. It was an actual country musician who did this song, and it was a song that was on his album. I forget who it was. Um <laughs> But now we have to take a stab at Toyota. It's a car. So the song wasn't made for the commercial. The song was. It was contracted by the beer company. But then it became. But then then they became a song. Right. Okay. Okay. So now now, the guess starts with you, Pop Up. Now your choices are: is it Pearl? Is it Swirl? Or is it Merle? Oh, (laughs) he was gonna make it harder. Yep. Because they all rhyme with girl. I should this one for exactly. And I figured you would use that. Uh, Not a girl in beer. Mm -mm. So Pop Up, is it Pearl, Swirl, or Merle? Well, wow. I'll go with Merle. With Merle. Merle? Okay. All right. Wayne, Pearl, you know, Swirl, or Merle? I'm going to say uh, because neither Swirl nor Merle <laughs> are girls, <laughs> I'm going to say Pearl. Yeah, Pearl. I was thinking the exact same thing, so, actually. So I'm going to go with Pearl. With Pearl yeah. as well. So no love for Swirl. We have one for Merle, two for Pearl, and Pearl is the correct That's answer. Right. That's right. Yes, yes. All I right. think we've taken the lead. We've pulled ahead. You have. You, you are both tied at three, and Pop-Up, I'm sorry to say, you are trailing with two points. 
Now, Pearl Brewing Company was formed in 1883 in San Antonio, Texas. And then in 1902, Otto Kohler, the brewery's most recognized person that was working there at the time, uh, he took the helm. He took over. Now, Kohler was so good as the head of the brewery that legend has it, he could tell how his employees were working, how effectively his employees were working just by the smoke, the color of the smoke that was coming out of the stacks. In 1980, like how they elect a pope. Basically, yeah. In 1985, I just lost my spot, Pearl uh, was purchased by Pabst Brewing Company, Again. and they assumed the name Pabst. In 1999, they began transferring their production to Miller Brewing on a contract basis. Pearl Brewing Company. Hmm. All right. It's a beer, not a girl. It's a beer, not a girl. <laughs> now, next up is this little ditty right here. You're the one for me. And I'm the one for you. For you. Uh -huh. Ah. Because we have true love. Who says love's not for sale? True brood love. Like the taste of a Ale? <laughs> oh, you cut it off completely. See, I'm trying not to give you any clues. No. Apparently not. All right, so Wayne, the guess will start with you. Now, okay. is it going to be Jenny C. Cream Ale by the name of Jenny? Is it going to be Shiner by the name of Shiny? Or is it going to be Bergoff by the name of Bergy? Wow. Well, I, first I'd like to say that I thought for a second it was going to go into Bare Necessities. <laughs> <laughs> and it kind of sounded like the theme song to Mr. Belvedere. <laughs> so it was Bergy, Shiny, or what was the or other one? Jenny. Jenny. Ah, uh, Bergy Shiny Jenny, Bergy Shiny Jenny. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna say Jenny. Jenny. All right, a vote for Jenny. Steph, how about you? Bergy Shiny. I'm gonna shiny, say Jenny. Jenny, just because I think in my Know Your Beers I'm gonna mention Genesee. So there's a connection there. So okay. that's what I'm gonna so say. So you're hoping Jenny. for the connection now. Yes. Pop up. Yeah, I'll go with Jenny too. Jenny probably. as well. All right. So no love for Shiny or Bergy. I must be terrible at this because it's Jenny. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, I knew they used to call that Jenny. I'd never heard yeah, of it. And it's, what is it or, actually? Yeah. Jenna, the Genesee, Genesee Cream Ale. Genesee yeah, Cream Ale. Yes. Yeah, now, uh, Genesee Cream Ale, or Jenny, as it is often referred to, was born in 1960 by head brewmaster Clarence Gemin, or Gemin. I, I'm hoping it's Gemin. Uh, after it was initially brewed by Gemin, it was, he was quoted as saying, I think we got a winner here. In 1964, it was packaged and distributed as the quote-unquote male ale and became the unofficial <laughs> leisure beverage of Playboys and Swashbucklers. Wow. This is all straight from their website. Now, I don't always to, drink beer, but, but when, when I, I do, do, I drink Jenny. And I swashbuckle. <laughs> <laughs> I swashbuckle. And also, according That's to their website, verb. it is now. Uh, in 1972, a delivery truck was hijacked and lost a load of beer, but the driver was found safe and unharmed. In 1988, and drunk. And drunk. <laughs> in 1988, it won its first, first place medal at the Great American Beer Festival in Denver, Colorado. So we each had one point added to our scores here as we voted for Jenny. So we have Wayne at four, Steph at four, Pop Up at three. Still a close game. All it right. It, anybody can run away with this game. Now, next up, we have the most rewarding flavor in this man's world for people who are having fun. Please. <laughs> the one beer to have. When you're having more than one. <laughs> Apparently your father knows this song, I think by he the does. Way. I think he does. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So oh, they, they all do. Wait, they yeah. all? Uh, okay. All right. So everybody, now our entire everybody here is so knows. old. Oh. <laughs> oh, you're getting some fists now. I would just like to point out that I am, in fact, the youngest one you here. Yeah. So yeah, ha, yeah, ha, yeah. ha, 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 ha. So, uh, Steph, the guess will start with you. Is that... <laughs> you just cut in with a napkin. <laughs> People are throwing things at us. Is that Straub, is it Schmidt, or is it Schaefer? Straub, Ooh. Schmidt, or Schaefer? <laughs> we all have to sing our guesses. <laughs> I'm going to say Sh Schmidt was one of them. Yes, Straub, say, Schmidt, or Schaefer. I'm going to say Schmidt. Schmidt. Steph says oh, no, I'm... I mean, I must be right. Steph says <laughs> Schmidt. So, Pop Pop, what would be your what would be your guess? Repeat the beers again. All right, we can. It can either be Straub, Schmidt, or Schaefer. <laughs> no help from the audience. Thank you. I have two, but you have to narrow it down to one. No help from the peanut gallery. <laughs> I'm gonna take Schaefer. Schaefer. We have a vote for Schaefer. So Wayne, Straub, Schmidt, or Schaefer? 
Um, well, I think I'm going to have to go with Schaefer. Cheater. Schaefer. <laughs> <laughs> See, yeah, I, they, people ask, like, was it Price is Right? People ask the audience. Well, yeah, that's not allowed here. This is not Price is Right. Uh, I know. Anyway, so uh, we have a vote for Schmidt and two votes for Schaefer. Schaefer is the winner. So oh, that means, what a surprise. So that means Pop-Up and Wayne <laughs> get a surprise, point. Surprise, so Wayne is now in the surprise. lead. Pop-Up and Steph are tied. Oh, he pulls ahead. So now we have uh, Schaefer. They were first produced in 1842 by the F&M Schaefer Brewing Company and is billed as supposedly, according to them, America's oldest lager. Until hmm. the mid-1970s, Schaefer was the world's best-selling beer before losing that spot to Budweiser. Their advertising slogan, which can be heard in the song we just listened to, was Schaefer is the one beer to have when you're having more than one. In 1981, the brand was purchased by Stroh Brewing Company, who then in turn in 1999 was purchased by Pabst. Wow, Pabst, Pabst so. buys everything. Apparently they do, yes. Now that was Schaefer. So we have, let me do the math here, pop up at four. We have Wayne at one, two, three, five. And then Steph is at four also. All right. Push. Uh, so our next one here should be. When you're making it here, make it this one here. This makes it great. So go for it. Sorry. Voltron. That's Voltron. I'll turn that down and play it again <laughs> for you because I noticed that kind of hurts some of your ears. When you're making it here, make it this one here. This makes it great. So go for it. Okay. Radical. So now the guessing is going to start back with you, Pop Pop. Is it? Is it peels? Is it Schlitz or is this one Straub? Hmm. Peels? Schlitz. 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 Or Straub. Straub. <laughs> He's thinking really hard. Sitting, sitting back from the microphone thinking. I can, I can, see, I can see the smoke, smoke coming out of the ears. I got two in mine. So which two do you think it is? And then I'll ask you to narrow it down to one. I'm just curious where your head's at. <laughs> I have it. I've been thinking of um, <clears throat> peels and slits, but not a fan of straw. No. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll take peels. Just peels. To see what happens. All right. All right. So we pop up with peels. Wayne. Peels, uh, slit, schlitz, uh, <laughs> or a straw. I'm gonna go with slits because it's the most fun to say. <laughs> we have a. That's actually Rich's slits. favorite beer. Oh, before but like before lime margarita. the lime before margaritas. Margaritas, of course. I'm going to say peels. Peels. Two votes for Peels, one for Schlitz, no love for Straub yet again. The correct answer is Schlitz. Woo! Oh! All right, so Wayne gets another point. He's oh, pulling right. ahead. That's right. All right. Yeah, yeah. This is what happens when the master <laughs> becomes the student. Yes. <laughs> the, uh, the Joseph Schlitz Brewing Company was a brewery out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, formed in 1858 after Joseph Schlitz. Uh, he bought it from August Krug. And changed the name. <laughs> the company began to thrive after the Great Chicago Fire in 1871, even though they were in Milwaukee, only because Schlitz decided to donate thousands of barrels of beer to that city, to Chicago, after losing many of their breweries to that fire. Oh, that's nice. Following the success there, he, they decided to open up a distribution <laughs> point in the city, which turned out to be their first step towards a national expansion. In 1873, they, were, uh, they rejected a bid to be purchased by Bratton & Sons, but in 1902, the brewery was producing roughly one million barrels of beer a year. And then was purchased by Pabst. <laughs> <laughs> its slogan soon became the drink that made Milwaukee famous, and then in 1982, the company was purchased by Stroh, who was in turn purchased <laughs> by <laughs> Pabst. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Wow. <laughs> oh, my. So, next up, the guessing will start with Wayne. This is the tune here. What do we think that one is, Wayne? Is it hams? Is it stag? Or is it cores? I'm going to say velvet underground. Velvet underground <laughs> is not an option, sir. <laughs> what was it? Hams, stag, or cores? Hams, stag, or cores? Um... I'm going to go with Coors. Coors? We have a vote for Coors. Steph, hams, stag, or Coors? I'm going to say stag. Stag. And that leaves up to pop-up. Hams, stag, or Coors? Coors. Coors. All right. Two votes for Coors. One for stag. None for hams. You are all incorrect. Oh. It was oh. hams. Oh. Hams. Nobody gets a point there. Why didn't you tell but, me? But Uncle Chuck in the audience, we have a point for Uncle Chuck. That is getting a right <laughs> vote. The audience Uncle gets a point. Uncle Chuck <laughs> slash audience. Oh, I will... One. <laughs> yeah, but you cheated and told them, so that you is actually that's, point. that's negative two points plus this one means you're at zero. Uh, it wait. is his birthday. I know. We're negative two shot. plus one, one is, is negative, negative one. one negative, negative 
one plus one, one is zero. One plus one plus two plus one. One plus two plus two plus, plus one plus two. One plus two plus one plus one. I told you I didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a plant. <laughs> Sorry. For anybody wondering that reference, that's from the movie Clue. But now, back to hams. Back to, now back to Ham. <laughs> Theodore Ham Brewing Company was established in 1865 when Ham himself inherited the Excelsior Brewery from his friend A.F. Kelly. The brewery was constructed over artesian wells outside of St. Paul, Minnesota, and by, sorry, by 1880, the brewery was hailed as the second largest in the entire state. His son and grandson, William and William Jr., respectively, inherited their operation in 1903, and then in order to survive during Prohibition, they continued to sell soft drinks and food. Then in 1968, the company was purchased by... Pabst! No, believe it or not, <laughs> it was purchased by Hublain? Hu We're going with that. H-E-U-B-L-E-I-N. Who Which was, was a shell company created by Pabst so they could launder <laughs> right. money. Who was acquired... Pabst sold sideways. Pabst sold sideways. sideways. <laughs> that Possibly. sounds about right. They were acquired by Olympia Brewing Company in 1983, who in turn was bought by Miller in 1999, not Pabst. Which was then bought by Viacom. Right. <laughs> Miller Coors now produces three beers under the name Hams, the Premium, their Golden Draft, and the Special Light. Nobody got a point on that one. No. That makes me feel good about me preparing no, this Uncle game. Chuck got a point. True. Nobody at this table got a point. Yeah. Right, you, you guys are the audience. Got. <laughs> it was a pointless point. It's a pointless point. I see where you two get it from. All right, we have two more to go. Two more to go. This is our next tune here. For mankind's pleasure, this is the one. Get pleasure. Bleep. The most refreshing beer a thirsty man can pour. Yet light enough to leave room for more. And yes, that first line was for man size pleasure. <laughs> Iron City. <laughs> what? Iron City. Iron City? Iron City is not an option. You should wait till I give the options first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the guessing will start with Steph. Steph, oh, do we have Michelob, Falstaff, or Lowenbrow? Hmm. Michelob, Falstaff, for man, or Lowenbrow. Man size. For man sized pleasure. <laughs> it's a good thing Trojan didn't get to that one first. Yeah, really. <laughs> <sighs> I'll say Michelob. Michelob. We have a vote from Michelob. Pop up. We have Michelob, Falstaff, or Lowenbrow. Michelob, Falstaff. Lowenbrow. Lowenbrow. Vote from Lowenbrow. It's Brow. actually Lewenbrow. 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 Wayne, Michelob, Falstaff, or Lewenbrow. Hmm. Hmm. No looking to the audience. We'll have, what's the second one? Falstaff? Falstaff? Falstaff. Falstaff. I'm going to go with that one. You're going with that one. All right. So we have one vote for each of them. The correct answer goes to Wayne Falstaff. Ooh, hey. Wayne oh. gets yet another That's point. when you go against the green. The audience was correct. The audience, so the was audience correct. claims they were correct. The Falstaff Brewing Company was a major brewery located in the St. Louis, Missouri area. Started, never heard of it, huh? It was started as the, the beer or brewery. St. Louis. <laughs> Either one. Either one. Either one is right. Yes. Uh, let's see here. Now, it started as the Lemp Brewery in 1838, but was renamed after the Shakespearean char character Sir John Falstaff in 1903. Now, this character appears in both the Henry IV plays and the Merry Wives of Windsor. And during this time, production peaked at over 7 million barrels brewed in 1965, making them the third largest brewery in the country. Until they were purchased by Pabst. Until they were, no, not necessarily. <laughs> not this one. Uh, let's see. Now, their, uh, their progress declined over 70% in the next 10 years, and it adopted the moniker of a blue ribbon quickly, so there is a relation to Pops' blue oh. ribbon. Uh, now, this got to be so serious that they successfully won a court case in 1898 for the rights to use a blue ribbon. That same year, their production saw millions of barrels they tried to acquire Narragansett Brewing Company of Rhode Island. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Our, co our guest... Our guest host for today is trying to get an audience member to get him another Bud Light right now. If we right, could be so, I am getting kind. dry. He's getting dry. We, this man needs. We a need beer. to move along and get to the tasting segment. I it's promise coming. It's we coming. Are almost done. Okay. Good. All right. So now I need that plug. All right. Whatever. I'm running out of Uchus on the uh, soundboard. Okay. Uh, uh, let's see. The same. Uh, they won a case. Uh, oh wait. Here we go. They <laughs> tried to acquire Narragansett Brewing Company of Rhode Island, but the state of Rhode but Island. But it had already been acquired by Pabst. The state of Rhode Island <laughs> filed an antitrust suit against them, and even though the Supreme Court ruled in their favor years later, the company, Falstaff, never recovered. Hmm. 
This brings us to the final one, and then I'm going to plug the soundboard in so we're okay for the rest of the show. This final tune we have right here. When you're watching TV, boxing bouts with fighters swinging hooks and clouts, the moment that bell begins to sound, Please. from the very first round, what do you have? Please. What'll you have? Please. What'll you have? Will you have Pabst Blue Ribbon? Will you have Rolling Rock? Or will you have Blatz? And the guessing oh, will start with Pop Pop. What do we have here, Pop Pop? Pabst Blue Ribbon. Pabst Blue Ribbon. A vote for Pabst Blue Ribbon. Oh. Wayne. Is it Pabst Blue Ribbon, or will you have Rolling Rock, or will you have Blatz? I was going to say Blatz because it sounds like bleep, <laughs> but uh, I'm going to go with PBR. It has to be PBR. PBR. Seriously, we so, have to end with PBR. So, saw, yes, that's my final answer. You saw my logic. You were all correct. Pabst Blue Ribbon is owned by, of course, Pabst Brewing Company, and they were originally established in 1844 in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And then they were bought by Pabst. They were bought by themselves, <laughs> and then they moved to Los Angeles. PBR is currently contract brewed in six different facilities across the U.S. owned by Miller Brewing Company. Allegedly, hmm. at the 1983 World's Columbian Exposition in Chicago, it was awarded the title of America's Best, which is an award that did not actually include a blue ribbon. <laughs> this win, however, it's been disputed, saying that the Expo's judges only awarded bronze medals, nothing higher, in recognition of, quote-unquote, some independent and essential excellence in the article displayed. Their peak was in 1977 when they reached 18 million barrels produced in one year, but by 2001 they had dipped to 1 million barrels, which was 90% of its peak. Hmm. So, after doing some uh, quick math here, we each got a point on that one. I should totally tally that up right there. We have Pop-Up has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Pop-Up has 5. Wayne has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, Brilliant. 7, 8. Woo! Steph has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Less than 8. All right, less than 8. Less than 8, more than 4. We have Pop Up and Wayne. And that's uh, our sorry, score. Pop Up and Steph tied at five. Wayne winning it all with eight. Oh, Joe. So congratulations, Wayne. You are now officially on the leaderboard now that you yeah. did not have yeah. to host First this. First time. Woo. First time. Wow. And grab Roulations. Thank you very yeah. much. All right. Do I get a bumper sticker? Uh, do we have any more? <laughs> I think we have one. All right. Then, yes, you get a bumper sticker. Yay. What is the brown paper bag that the audience just brought to us? That's a very Peanuts. good question. Peanuts. Peanuts. <laughs> oh, of course. Uh, I get oh, it now. All right. So we did the game. No so popcorn. Just no <laughs> popcorn. All right. I think so it's now, time for some beer education. It's time for some beer education. Beer. No, 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 your beers. So in honor of uh, Grandpop's visit today, our Know Your Beer segment is going to focus on his favorite style of beer, the light American lager. Ooh. And I will go through this very fast because he's already uh, started drinking our first tasting beer. So <laughs> the American lager was originated in Europe in the mid-19th century and came to America with German immigrants. In Bavaria and the Czech Republic, the beers were firmly hopped and they sometimes used adjuncts such as rice or corn. The best known American lager, of course, is Budweiser. And pale lager <laughs> is the number one choice among America's largest breweries, while not usually found in America's microbreweries. The U.S. was traditionally an ale and whiskey consuming region in the early 19th century. Pale lager was introduced by German immigrants, and these German brewers made the beers using American six row barley and adding up to 30% corn to the grain bill. At that time, the beer was brewed just like the European pale lager style. After Prohibition, brewers began using up to 50% corn or rice in the beers. The only big brewery pre-Prohibition lagers still in the U.S. are Yingling's Traditional Lager, Genesee Brewing Company's Genesee Beer, and Jenny. August Shell Brewing Jenny. Company's Original. Recently, it's been reintroduced Jenny by Victory... Beer. Really? Not a girl. <laughs> Recently, it's been reintroduced by Victory Brewing Company's Throwback Lager, North Coast Brewing Company's uh, Shermshaw Pilsner. I can't read it. My, my printer is running out of ink. Scrimshaw. 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 That's, I guess that's what it says. Rickshaw. Dan used all my ink this morning. so. And Full Sail Brewing Company's <laughs> Session Lager. Sorry, the I light, to print something. The light lager is generally a lighter version of the, the brewery's premium lager and usually lower in alcohol, calories, and carbohydrates. A high amount of cereal adjuncts like rice or corn are typically added to help lighten the beer. So while you're tasting an American light lager, there's usually little to no malt aroma at all, and it usually smells sweet or corn-like with very little hop sweet aroma. Sweet corny. It looks <laughs> very pale, straw, pale yellow color, is very clear, and it's typically crisp and dry, apparently, with some low levels of greeny or corn-like sweetness. Hop flavor and bitterness range are basically none to very low, and hop bitterness is 
uh, very low, I just said that, high levels of carbonation provide that dry finish. Very light body um, from a high percentage of those adjuncts and very highly carbonated with that uh, bite on your tongue. And it, they even said it may seem watery. <laughs> See, so I'm not crazy when I tell <laughs> so you it tastes like water. So overall, those who enjoy light American lagers say they are very refreshing and thirst quenching. And they are designed to appeal to the broadest range of the general public as possible. Some commercial examples, of course, are Bitburger Light, Sam Adams Light, Heineken Premium Light, Miller Light, Bud Light, Coors Light, Old Milwaukee Light, oh. and Amstel Light. <laughs> So uh, there you go, Grandpa. Now you've been beer educated about your favorite style of beer. So what, do, why do they even bother using hops in these beers? So they can say <laughs> well, they do. Hops. You can't taste them. You can't smell them. I mean, I know they act as a preservative. A preservative, and it, it helps to kill bacteria. Kill back, yeah. And it's one of the four ingredients, of well, course. It, yeah, yeah, but like, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah. Are we ready to drink some We're beer? We're ready to drink some beer. Yeah. Here we go. Just beer keep me, it cold. Beer me! Beer me! Beer me! And yes, our beers are cold. <laughs> so our first beer comes to us from Taos, New Mexico. It's Taos, Esky New Mexico. Brew Pub and Eatery's Green Chili Beer. This is a 4.0% chili beer. Sorry our, to our producer. I just bumped the microphone. It happens. And this is the beer that sort of initiated my love for spicy beers. I first had this on a trip um, when I was going to visit my brother, and it was on tap at the pub. And I had it with a bowl of their extremely spicy vegetarian Ooh, green chili stew. So spicy. And my eyes were watering, my nose was running, but I absolutely loved it. And now I search out as many spicy beers as possible, and I'm always brewing up a new spicy brew myself. In case, in fact, I just bottled the Capsaicin Carnival Ooh, today, so hopefully wait. we'll get it labeled and we'll be able to taste it soon. So you can see how highly carbonated this is. Mm -hmm. Look, this could possibly look like an American lager, but it yeah. certainly so isn't going to. It's, it's like a little it. hazy, though. Oh. It smells wonderful. That is the smell that I love. And they use those New Mexican chilies. Now, what it's kind of chilies chili. are in here? New Mexican chilies. <laughs> they're just New Mexican chilies? Yep. They're not like habanero or jalapeno or anything? They are New Mexican chilies. Are they Are they, Are they? they New Mexican chilies? Yes. Is that what? They're New Mexican chilies. Are they from New Mexico? Are they old mm, Mexican chilies? I need to look that up. I'm okay. not sure. <laughs> So um, there's, I there's just really I love this beer. It's good because you get the flavor of the chili. I Ooh. think Grandpa needs a refill. You get the flavor of the chili and you get a little <laughs> bit of spice, but it's not overwhelming. And when you pair it with something even spicier, it's just it brings it That's out that even extra more. Little. It hits it, the spot. It does. The spice, um, as I think with a lot of spicy beers, is it it, it, it doesn't jump you, out at you right away. No, you it kind of creeps taste up. Of the pepper in it. Yeah, you can yeah. really taste the pepper. Yeah. They did a great job. What do you think, Dan? I like it. it. It's got a good, uh, good kick, a good spice to it, but it's not overpowering to the point where, you know, I'm necessarily gonna cry and not be able to drink anything else. Like it, the the kick kind of disappears after a second. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't, does. it doesn't it does. linger it too much. Fades in the background. Um, yeah, it's really good. I really like the aroma of it. Yeah, they do a nice job. Every time I, I'm in New Mexico, I'm sure to, I'm sure to stop by and at least pick up a bottle of the green chili beer. So moving on, another beer from New Mexico. This is Abbey Beverage Company's Monk Triple Ale oh, Reserve from Abiquiu, New Mexico. This is a 9.2 triple, and it was actually brewed oh, at oh, the boy. brewery at the Monastery of Christ in the Desert. How do I open this? You pop it. It's in a <laughs> bottle. Technical <laughs> difficulties, everyone. <laughs> like that. Oh, okay. And then you got to pop that thing out, but there's tape around it. Oh, God. They said they actually used these bottles thinking of homebrewers so they could reuse them because these are the kind of bottles oh, that's right, on my right, beer. Right, yeah. so All that I was really cool. You don't open anything and destroy any of my equipment. Oh, sorry. So they use the native hops in this beer that are grown right on site at the brewery at the monastery there. And if you check out our website, you can see that I did. Oh, our our our, uh, our audience wants now, to try do you some want of these the beers. The chili beer, or the monks, the monks. Okay. The monk beer. Let me. Uh, <laughs> All right. Thank you. Here we go. If you go we'll on our website, next. you'll see my mini trip report about our visit to the brewery at the Monastery of Christ in the With Desert. With some beautiful pictures. It was, yeah, Rich, my, my, well, everybody knows who Rich is by now. He took some awesome <laughs> pictures. But we drove on this crazy 13-mile dirt road right along the Chama River to get out to the monastery. It was uh, mom was holding on to the, <laughs> to the seat. but uh, we met up with brother Christian when we got there. He's a 33 year old, 33 year resident of the monastery. He's also the seller, business manager, and chief fundraiser there. And he took us on a tour of the monastery, the brewery, and the hop garden. And he was fully dressed in his black robe, his baseball cap, and sunglasses. And he was awesome. We chatted about uh, Philly beer spots. Believe it or not, he Ooh. knew monks and, and Iron Abbey. Imagine well, a monk knew monks. monks. <laughs> <laughs> but he. He really, and we also talked about Trappist breweries from all around the world, and, and he really knew his stuff, and we talked about home brewing. But, but anyway, the brewery at the monastery opened.
opened in March of 2011, and they have a half-barrel microbrewing system, and they're planning to expand to a five- or seven-barrel system in the near future. All right. So I didn't get any of this beer, oh by the way. Oh, my goodness. I totally forgot. We were just so busy <laughs> You can use this when I rinsed it. All right. So what do you think? I, I like it. It's uh, it's pretty complex. It's layered, it seems like. And it's yeah, it's, uh, in color, it's similar to the last one, but a little less, uh, I think a little less hazy. But um, Yeah, the flavor, the color is close to it, but the flavor is mm. nowhere near. But that's not a bad thing. They're both good in their own right. Mm. It does kind of help put out the fire a little bit. I get bit a little it does, yeah. apricot, peachy. Little I can see that. Yeah. 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 And it definitely finishes dry. Mm. What about you, Pop-Up? What do you think? Good. It's good? Good. Is it smooth? It's a spot. It hits the spot. It is, it is a refreshing That's like beer. his smooth. Yeah. Dan says smooth, true, and, yeah. and Grandpa says hits the spot. All right. So you know he likes it if it hits the spot. It has some, uh, yeah, a little fruitiness that kind of comes in. Yeah, it's at nice. The end. It's not... It, it's it's not as like heavy as I was expecting. Right, Sometimes yeah. you drink a, a, a triple and it, it stays with you for a little what's bit. What's the uh, what's the ABV? I on was it? just going to ask that question. Nine point two. Nine point two. That's yeah. up there. It doesn't taste like. No, 9.2. you don't get the alcohol taste. You don't really get the heat from the alcohol either. It's a little earthy too. I think that's from the hops, from those fresh. Hops I think that's from the monks. Eric could be from the monks. And what's really cool, I talked about this on the blog, but if you look on the bottle, that is an actual photograph of one of the monks. That is lives at the monastery. Monks like you take their pictures. <laughs> he looks like he could be yeah. like a, a rap artist. I uh, no, it <laughs> looks really cool. Like, it that's looks, a cool picture. That looks, it looks really yeah. professional, and I I I didn't buy the one the bottle that had the picture of Brother Christian on, but we did take a picture of it. But I thought that was really cool that I was hanging out with the monk and his picture was DJ on the bottle. DJ Vow of Silence. <laughs> DJ Vow of Silence. Although he definitely has much more cred because he actually is a monk, so he's allowed to wear no, that hood true. and everything. That's true. Uh, but if, if any of our listeners are from the New Mexico area or ever get out there, certainly uh, check out the brewery. It's it's really cool to see monks that brew their own yeah, beer. Yeah, and, and like I said, the, the, the photographs you had uh, with that blog post are just beautiful. I mean, the landscape, the uh, and it the was an amazing monastery day. is, yeah. It's that just, blue sky behind the the church yeah. especially was absolutely gorgeous. We, we had a great time. My, my brother actually surprised me and took me there. I didn't know we were going there, and uh, we spent the day. There was a lot of fun. So moving on, our next one is uh, another brewery that I visited. I think there's a trend here. Uh, this is <laughs> Star Hill Brewery's win- Whiter Shade of Pale Ale. And they're out of Virginia. It's a seven percent white IPA. Um, th- though they, they they say the brewery says it's sort of a marriage between a Belgian wit and an IPA. So I'm interested to see what you think. So a few weeks ago, I visited the brewery and I picked up this bottle after it was recommended to me by Sam, who's one of the cellarmen there at the brewery. And if you're interested in visiting this brewery, you can do a sample of seven beers for five dollars and take a free tour of the brewery. Um, it's also very close to Blue Mountain Brewery, Devil's Backbone, along with many other breweries. So you could sort of make a brewery day of it. All right. So this is Star Hills, white, whiter shade of pale ale. Wow. It's extremely clear. Yeah. Shade Actually, you know what? For the color, it, it, to me, it still kind of looks like the other two that we yeah. just had. Yeah. We have a nice pale golden beer, beer so far yeah. today. Uh, mm. Though I think our last one's going to be different. Very spicy, floral, hop aroma. Very nice. Ooh, it is. Ooh, Very yes. Fresh. Yeah, you really get the... They must have dry hopped this. It's the hop in there. The hop I, I smell, uh, I smell pineapple in it. Pineapple? Well, fruity. Yeah, I could see a little little, little pineapple behind the hops. Ooh. The pineapple could be from the hops, too. Mm-hmm. It's got a very nice citrus taste to it. Yeah, it is very citrusy, maybe lemony. Ooh, yeah. Definitely it's fresh. Definitely hoppy. It's fresh. Definitely lemony fresh. fresh. It's lemony fresh. Uh, what do you think? Ooh. Uh, I don't know. It seems dry to me. Too dry? Yeah, I it think... It does finish very dry. Yeah, and I think, uh, I mean, the hoppiness, I know uh, you probably don't really drink a whole lot of really hoppy beers. Yeah, but this seems it very dry. It's mm-hmm. almost a little minty. Are you getting that minty? Yeah, like, like, like when you, uh, did you ever chew on mint leaves? Yeah. You know, like, not like a, not like a candy mint, like but like the, the fresh, actual like fresh, fresh mint leaves. Plant, yeah, yeah, you really do. Like, in the aftertaste, you get a mint. I, I nice. won't lie, I don't actually, I don't really get much of that mint. I'm, no. I'm still getting more of the citrus out the of it. The funny thing that. is, I didn't really notice it, then as soon as you said it, it kind of, mm-hmm. it kind of hit me in the back of my throat there. Yeah. It's really I good. I like this one. Star I Hill. think we need to give Uncle Chuck some of this because he's a big IPA drinker, too. It's yes. good. He's still working on the monks. Oh. And his oh, Francis Connor. Hold on. <laughs> Not for long. There he goes. Now he's done. All right. Do you want to rinse that or do you don't care? No, no. <laughs> just throw it all in there. Throw it all in. <laughs> all right. He wants to taste as much in one shot as he can. That's right. So, Grandpa, since it's your birthday, I thought we would end with a beer that's sort of like a birthday cake. A birthday cake beer? What do you think? That sounds great to me. <laughs> <laughs> the last beer I have here is from Brewery Omegang. It's their Chocolate Indulgence. Oh, that sounds oh, okay. good. 
And it's a 7% Belgian style stout brewed with actual Belgian chocolate. Oh, good job. That got the pop. sounded cool. I love it. <laughs> we have a sound. <laughs> chocolate indulgent was, jo- indulgence was introduced on October 13, 2007 at Omegang's 10th anniversary party. And the label reads, go ahead, uh, dessert mm-hmm. is good for the soul. And I thought this True would be a story. good way to end our special 10th episode slash Grandpop's birthday extravaganza. Rock and roll dessert. jubilee of stars. That's right. <laughs> Rock and roll. Thank you. Oh, we should come up with a jingle. Oh, it's like black. I love it. Yeah, the head has a a really nice color. Fluffy tan head. Yeah, I really like it. Looks like a dessert beer. And then you go to smell it, and oh, I'm getting a lot of that chocolate. Is this a clean glass? Uh, It it is now. Here, give me that Uh, one. Here, use this one. Okay. I don't want your cooties. (laughs) Really? really? (laughs) Yeah, I like I like the the smell. I like the look of the head on it. It's a nice comparison to light head to the dark beer. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> oh, <there you laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. And we have somebody trying to smell the beer from inside the beer. <laughs> yeah, well, you know. You know what? I it, I haven't even tried it yet, but it smells like real chocolate. It's not one of those beers that smells like there's chocolate in it, but it's like fake like flavor sweet, chocolate. Like right. milk chocolate, Overly processed yeah. chocolate. Yeah, yeah. It's more of a raw cocoa type. If I may. It's smooth. Ooh. Ah, you may. That's good. It does taste like hater chocolate. Yeah. Oh, mm. and the beer hater from the audience would like to try the chocolate beer. Oh, it's got a smokiness, too. It does. Oh, I get that, yeah. Yum. No, that's yeah. really nice. Oh, yuck, it's beer. Beer <laughs> hater doesn't like it. Oh, yuck, it's beer. Have you ever had a beer that you've liked? No. No? Okay. No. Then why I'm do you sorry. keep going back for it? Just to see if it's ever changed. Okay. <laughs> it hasn't Fair enough. changed. No, it's real Belgian old. chocolate. It's, it's, a li- <laughs> it's a little sweet at first, but... It, it's more like that dark chocolate tart. Yeah, like. yeah, it is, and I find that um. You gotta take a couple drinks of it yeah. to get the taste. Yeah. yeah. Uh huh. And I think after like the third or fourth sip, you get right. some of the sweetness you coming do. up in the aftertaste. Yeah. Right. Um. It's really, it's really good. And you it almost is. get like a dark dried fruit flavor too. Mm-hmm. A little bit, yeah. Like a prune. I could or see like a, a like a dark chocolate and prune combo. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yay! Dark chocolate and prune. <laughs> it may not sound that great, but it's pretty good. <laughs> you know, what? I haven't. I don't think I've had a beer from Oma Gang that I have not liked. You know, I think this is the first beer I've ever had from Oma Gang. Really? You mm. haven't done the Game of Thrones one? I haven't tried oh, either of them. No. Well, the new Game of Thrones beer I just saw. They're releasing it at the brewery on. Sorry, did I throw something in no, your face? No, fly flew up my nose. Oh, we're not used to recording outside. But it's being released um, Labor Day. Oh. So, or oh. I, should, I should say it will. It, it was released on Labor Day. Full disclosure, we have recorded this episode that? before. Before Labor Day. Before Labor Day. <laughs> will and have been. Will, is that will the name been. of it? The brewery is Oma Gang. This is called the Chocolate Indulgence. Where are they yeah. based out of? Cooperstown, Cooperstown, New York. Cooperstown, New York. Did you say that? Did you just say that? Um... I've mentioned it before. Okay. I, I don't know. Sorry, You've I've never got been? We'll have to go I've up never to the been. The, my favorite time of the year to go up there is in the fall. Last fall, we were up there um, when the leaves were at their peak. And, I mean, the brewery is breathtaking and beautiful any time of year. I've been there many times of year. But fall is just, it, it's absolutely stunning with the leaves and their land there. It's And there's actually a wine slash beer trail that you can do. Sorry, I just bumped the microphone again. <laughs> There's a wine beer trail that you can do. You can go to a bunch of different wineries and breweries, and you get, like, a passport kind of thing stamped. And then at the end, wherever your last stop is and you get your last stamp, you can either choose a wine glass or a pint glass with all the logos on. And uh, you can take that home with you. So good little souvenir. Make it so. Oh, hey. Steph, is there any (laughs) brewery you ever missed? There's a few I haven't been to. I'm I'm working on it. Well, you said <laughs> when you were in um, San Diego, you were sick I and couldn't make it to yeah. Stone. I didn't make it to Stone. Yeah, hopefully, you, get to st- you could have had Woot Stout from the source. Well, they didn't. Well, it wasn't Woot around. Stout then. wasn't there then, but you could time travel and had Woot no, Stout I, at the source. We spent we spent the day at the San Diego Zoo, and just from being in the sun all day, I just was not feeling good. So. Unfortunately, we had to head right back yeah, to the I hotel. Yeah, I guess you got to go back. Yeah, we will go back. No we problem. have to no go worries. back. <laughs> well, come to Florida. The zoo isn't that big. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's true. Well, I see. haven't been to the Naples Beach Brewery yet. Every time we try to go there, they're closed. Right, so. but you must do that before we leave down there. Yeah. You do that. That's true. We'll have to come down and go there. Maybe we can record live down in Naples. Ooh, on location. Okay. On location. We can try to take all this equipment with us. Well, our last episode we recorded uh, at Armstrong Ales, and... All that audio, by the way, was recorded on an iPhone. So I don't think that's too bad considering that. It really so wasn't. I'd no, like to get... Right. Li- but that then, can be set up to do that. To we can do it. Uh-huh. We can we, take you it. Know yeah. You know what? Yeah. Right. We can we do can it when do we take that. our we business trip to Orlando that's to do... True. Oh, to go to the Duff World. Yeah. 
or whatever it's called. Yeah, but you don't want to do it in Orlando. You want to do it down in Naples. All right, I don't want to get sued. <laughs> <laughs> we can take care of that. All right, sounds good. I'm going to make it happen. All right. I'm going to make it happen. It'll happen. Now, let's not forget that all of these beers that we've tried today and many, many more will be checked in on our Untapped account. We are Beer Busters on Untapped. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram. We are at Beer Busters. Don't forget Facebook.com slash Beer Busters Podcast. And, of course, Google Plus, all you have to do is search for Beer Busters Podcast. All of this, of course, will be linked from our website, BeerBustersPodcast.com, where you can find all this and more. But wait, there's more. <laughs> Blogs that we do, uh, Dan's Beer is Not From Here, Steph's New Beer Review, Wayne <coughs> does, uh, Wayne's done two of probably the most well-received articles that we've done so far. Oh, well, far. thank you. Thank you very much. And the, the one, we did an article on Wootstad, it was the, the top shelf. That one got retweeted and reposted by... Uh, uh, the fart guy. Right. By Greg. Greg um, took from Greg, Stone. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and then you did the uh, what is craft beer, and that one got a lot of attention too. So yeah, yeah I enjoy I enjoy doing that when I get from, you know I spend most of the time formatting the stuff that you guys write and putting it up there, but once in a while I find the time something strikes me and I'll I'll write about it. Yeah. yeah. But it all works out, and we're all we're keeping we're keeping it going. We're keep on trucking. Keeping we it real. We will keep on trucking. Keeping it real. Keeping it real. Something along those lines, brother. I've had a lot of beer today already. <laughs> <laughs> well, my friends, this does bring us MC Vow of Silence. MC Vow of Silence. This does bring us to the end of another episode. Of Beer Busters. And I would like to thank those of you for listening. And of course, our live audience that for some reason feels the need to give us applause. (laughs) And it was the great Kaiser Wilhelm who said, Give me a woman who loves beer and I will conquer the world. (laughs) (laughs) For those of us here at Beer Busters, I would like to thank our very special guest, our grandfather, Charlie Baker. Thank you for coming along. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you. My name is Dan Baker, joined by my co host and brewologist, Steph Hefner. And our fermentertainer, Wayne Baker, who did the wonderful open this episode. I tried my best. Thank you for joining us, friends. Until next time, we bid you adieu. Aloha.